species. Then I'm going to talk about the different types of myasthenia. I think it's becoming more, more and more um, uh, uh, obvious that the different forms of the disease um, uh, are really different, um, and they respond differently to, to treatment, and they present differently clinically. So I'll talk a little bit about that. And so this is just a complicated table that you don't need to memorize, so there's no test after, after, the, after the lecture. But just to give you an idea that, that there are a number of different clinical subtypes of myasthenia based on the antibody type, um, uh, based on what we find in the thymus, and based uh, a little bit on disease onset, okay? And I think that, th that the, the reason it's important to sort of try and group these different subtypes of myasthenia is that it, going forward, I think that if we're thinking about treatments that are going to really sort of modulate the disease, give a long-lasting sort of benefit or even a cure, I think we have to understand how the disease arises and is maintained in different subtypes, okay? Because it's very clear that these different subtypes seem to respond a little bit differently to different treatments. And these different subtypes, some of them you, you want to do thymectomy, some you don't. So I think that, that, that going forward, I think it's going to be important to see whether we can, we can understand whether there's differences in these subtypes that can, that can point us to the right treatment for that particular uh, disease subtype. So again, the features of weakness in myasthenia, it's fluctuating. So it can, it can vary significantly, even during the course of a, of a single day. It's fatigable, so typically muscles get weak with use and get better with rest. Um, there's no pain associated with myasthenia, and there are specific muscle groups involved. So we talked about that in the previous slide. So it tends to, 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 to involve the eyes, the chewing, swallowing muscles, um, uh, the limb muscles, um, and the respiratory muscles. So in almost all patients, the initial symptoms um, are in the eye muscles. Not always, but, but, but in most. Head, neck weakness can occur um, initially in 15%, and limb weakness um, as the initial manifestation of myasthenia is less common. Within the first year, about three quarters of patients develop um, uh, limb weakness. So it becomes generalized, even if it starts in the eye muscles, it becomes more generalized in about three quarters within the first year. Um, uh, within the first year, about two thirds reach their maximum MG severity. So usually within the first year, two thirds of people will get as bad as it's going to be um, in terms of the myasthenia. But again, this, so there's a third of people where that's not the case. And about 20% experience myasthenic crisis sometime during the first year. So again, the, in addition to, to people with anti-musk myasthenia having a different sort of pathophysiology, clinically they're a little bit different, right? Typically the course is more severe. They're more often refractory to medications. Um, the weakness um, uh, seems to be more in, in the neck muscles, the, um, uh, the chewing, swallowing muscles, and the respiratory muscles. Often it can, it can relatively spare um, uh, the extraocular muscles, which is unusual. And typically there may not be a response, or they may even get worse with mestinam. Um, so it's a little bit different. And this is just to illustrate that these people can have very severe facial weakness. So, so here, um, this gentleman's trying to close his eyes, so is this lady. And then the other thing is that, that remember, we said that, that the antibodies um, have an effect on the, uh, on the end plate morphology. And so actually you can see muscle atrophy um, uh, in these patients. And you see, and here you see a patient with atrophy of the tongue muscle um, and then after treatment, you see that that's much better. And so this is not something you'd, you'd expect to see in acetylcholine receptor myasthenia, but this you do see 
um, uh, in musk myasthenia. So again, suggesting that it's a little bit different disease, maybe we need to think about it a little bit differently.